Hi guys, um, good afternoon. Uh, am I uh, visible and audible to you all? Uh, <coughs> so I hope everybody is uh, doing fine and uh, studying well. Very few days left for INICT now uh, and I hope everybody is pushing hard because uh, it's a very good exam to give this time around because you have uh, lesser competition, more seats. Uh, so definitely uh, all you guys who are uh, writing it, do it seriously um, and do it well for the next three days. Um, it is good enough time to brush up on the most volatile topics, the Buritara Rato Wale topics. So see those classes that we took before NEET PG, revise the most volatile points and uh, focus on first, second proc subjects also because they are usually the weaknesses of most of us, right? Um, anyway, so coming back uh, to uh, radiology, uh, this is something which is very scoring, right? You hopefully will get a lot of integrated questions from radiology, medicine, surgery, and we'll be able to crack them because INICT does uh, focus on a few areas that we've been looking at through the last uh, three days and uh, tomorrow as well. So let's uh, begin with part three. And I think I am visible and audible to everyone. My name is uh, Zainab and uh, I teach radiology to you guys on an academy. Uh, this is this series that we are having. So we are on to day three here, purple, all big topics today. So head trauma, hepatobiliary radiology, PET scan, Doppler basics is what I want to focus on today. You have gotten questions from all of these topics in the past. Uh, so again, uh, just to remind you, there's going to be a test. Do enroll for it. The link is going to be available on the um, description of this video. Uh, this will be uh, at 9 o'clock tomorrow. All right. So uh, the aim is to get all 20 on 20 correct very, very quickly. Give yourself 15 minutes, 20 questions, all direct repeats. And I want all of you to do very well. And you'll also get some money in the process, which is always nice. Okay. Uh, right, so this is the schedule tonight at 9 o'clock. Don't miss this class. Derma will do a very, very quick review of all the images from Derma. From uh, Dr. Neena Khanna's book is where you get direct images which get asked in INICT as I've told you guys. So um, we'll be doing a very quick review of uh, the most important images in like 50 odd minutes. All right, so see you all at 9 o'clock on the app. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Apart from that, this is the plus subscription, iconic subscription uh, on an academy and these are the various batch courses that you can um, enroll into depending on your exam of interest and right now is the best time to subscribe because we have these offers which are going on. Okay, uh, so let's begin. Lots to do. Hepatobiliary radiology. Let's start with it. Uh, first thing, what are we seeing here? So let's start with the most easy stuff that you get uh, very, very frequently in the exam. What are we seeing on this? ultrasound image we know it's an ultrasound image this black thing tubular thing is the gallbladder anechoic fluid filled gallbladder and within it yes is this ecogenic thing which is nothing but the stone in a dependent position having this typical posterior acoustic shadowing and that is how i identify that this is a gallbladder stone right any stone will produce shadowing apart from stone what produces shadowing bones will produce shadowing air also produces shadowing but it's not so black it is very dirty shadowing is how we like to call it it's not this dense okay so three things which show shadowing investigation of choice as far as gold stones are concerned remember most of them 90 percent are radiolucent so x-ray ct do not have an important role unlike renal stones salivary stones here the primary investigation remains ultrasound right if a patient with gallstone comes to you with acute right upper quadrant pain leukocytosis tenderness what are we thinking of we're thinking of acute cholecystitis in which case again what will be the best the first the next investigation that they ask you will be yes it is again ultrasound right so ultrasound everything to do with gallstones and its complications which is acute cholecystitis in this case what ultrasound is going to show us guys is this wall thickening how it's different from an uncomplicated gallstone here the wall is going to be thick and when you keep the probe on the patient's right upper quadrant now patient will be uh, wincing right what is that that is murphy so now you're pressing with the probe it becomes sonographic murphy sign so these are two pointers that will tell you that there is acute cholecystitis the wall thickness guys that we take is more than three millimeters all right so more than three millimeters of wall thickened with a gallstone at the neck this is the shadowing producing obstruction 
this is what we have in acute cholecystitis and as one of you has correctly said Shruti most accurate here is going to be HEDA it's just a theoretical thing which is done not done in practice that sensitivity specificity wise when we combine both of them HEDA becomes more accurate although not followed in practice ultrasound is what usually suffices right um, Ayush you have mentioned wall eco shadow this is not wall eco shadow wall eco shadow means what I'm only going to see these three things let's just say this is the gallbladder wall this is the large calculus and then there is a shadow so i see wall i see eco i see shadow there is no lumen that is going to be seen when would i see something like this do you agree when the gb is thickened gb wall is thickened and it is contracted so anytime they give you a word which they have in the previous aims exam that gallbladder is scleroatrophic what are they referring to or what is this wall eco shadow sign referring to it is referring to chronic cholecystitis right there is this case here where there is wall thickening obstructive calculus becomes a case of acute cholecystitis is this difference clear to everybody yeah uh, what to do for the 10 percent stones that don't show up on ultrasound um, no, no, everything shows up on ultrasound. 90% are radio lucent, 10% are radio opaque. It means that 10% is going to show up on X ray and CT also. They are going to appear white. All of them are going to show up on ultrasound. Yeah. Is that uh, clear? Amazing elderly. Yeah. Okay. Cholecystectomy indication, Anubhav, surgeon's domain, like better to uh, just uh, hear it from them. Uh, let's move on to the next question. This is a repeat, direct repeat of last year's aims, but Abhika aims, recent most aims. 48 year old lady presents with right upper quadrant pain. Ultrasound reveals multiple GB calculi, but no wall thickening. So no acute cholecystitis. CBD diameter 12 mm. What is the normal CBD diameter? It has to be somewhere between 6 to 8 mm. Anything more than that is definitely dilated CBD. Right. So now there must be some obstruction at the distal end of CBD, which is causing the patient's pain. GGT is increased. ALP is increased. Means there is definitely biliary obstruction. So now what do you do? Next, here, the uh, this question is very, very important. What are they trying to ask? Are they trying to ask you the next step or the best step? You have to be uh, very, very attentive here. Read between the lines. Next step, matlab, right now, guys, if I ask you logically, a patient just go gallstone hai or biliary obstruction. Hai, what is the most likely cause of this biliary obstruction? Yes, my odds are going to be that it is likely a stone, a distal CBD stone. But am I sure? Did the ultrasound give me that information? No, ultrasound only told me as an initial investigation that okay, we are dealing with a case of biliary obstruction, but it could be anything. It could be a malignancy also. So what do I need to do next? I need to confirm the cause of biliary obstruction, whether it is benign or malignant. So remember, any case of biliary obstruction, start off with ultrasound. Next step, MRCP to find the cause. And once you know that this is the cause you go in with an ERCP which becomes the best the gold standard investigation because you can remove the stone also it is not just diagnostic it is therapeutic as well is this making sense so this is how you approach all biliary obstruction questions and they are obsessed with hepatobiliary questions that is why I am revising this for you one more time okay so whenever we deal with biliary obstruction guys tell me answer these thumb rules for me initial investigation patient has obstructive jaundice direct bilirubin is raised what do you start off with you start off with an ultrasound ultrasound will show you what what is this this is the liver with all of these dilated channels isko bolte hain ihbrd you must have read this term in ultrasound reports also intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation so intrahepatic biliary radicals will only dilate if there's a distal, distal obstruction what is this sign called this has also been tested in neat before this is called the double barrel sign normally this is the only black structure we see at the porta which is portal vein 
However, here, can you see how anterior to portal vein, this is the CBD which has become prominent. So this black thing, otherwise you never see such a dilated CBD ever, anterior to portal vein, all right. So this is representative of CBD dilatation, right. Then we measure it and we see it should be more than 8 millimeters, okay. So you start off with ultrasound, you know, you find there is some obstruction which is going on. Best investigation to tell us non-invasively. MRCT. Gold standard, something when I know the cause and I want to go in for a therapeutic treatment, that becomes ERCP. Again, image-based questions you guys struggle with, which is MRCP, which is ERCP. Anybody wants to tell me out of A and B, which is ERCP? Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreaticography. Endoscope, I can see. X-ray, I can see white contrast I can see it becomes ERCP right so look out for this white endoscope even if you don't see it look out for x-ray in the background when you see x-ray in the background it is ERCP okay guys so always you might not see the endoscope fine it's not necessary ki hamesha ye aayega view mein beech mein sometimes you might just see the x-ray and that will be your clue and what do you see here these are filling defects People like to call it meniscus sign also. These are filling defects representative of stones. On the other hand, this is magnetic resonance cholangiopancreaticography. Is there any contrast which is injected? No, this is a heavily T2 weighted image where I'm using the bile itself, which is a fluid, which is T2 hyper intense. So I suppress everything which is not T2 hyper intense and I see gallbladder, CBD, intrahepatic radicals and again, what are these black black things? They are again basically uh, yellow. Last photo, yellow one is CBD. Where is yellow? There is nothing yellow. Achha, is vein. Ha, this is a yellow arrow is CBD. This is portal vein. Ha, this is portal vein. Uske aage yellow arrow is CBD. Okay, coming back. So these voids, isko bolte hai, signal void which appear black. These are calculi. Alright, so this is how CBD stones will appear on MRCT, ERCP, advantage of ERCP being I can remove these stones as well. Okay, going back to, I need not going back, going forward to the next question. Again, AIMS question. 35 year old female presents with pain abdomen on post-op day 5. Okay, so now we've moved ahead and you've done the treatment of this patient following lab cholecystectomy. Okay, so this is post-op. Ultrasound shows a collection in right upper quadrant. So likely a leak has happened during laparoscopy. By leak, what is the most sensitive investigation? Right, as most of you have correctly told me, it is HEDA scan. So let's talk about biliary leaks. When I talk about bile leaks, you all know the Strasbourg classification. I am not going into it um, because we've done it in the BTR scores revision, right? So I don't want to go into that. What you need to remember, I'll come back to the image. What you need to remember are these one-liners. Anytime a bile leak is suspected, how do you start off? The patient has persistent output from the drain or patient has pain abdomen, suspecting bile leak. What do you start off with? What was already given to you in the question? Very nice, Bindu. We start off with an ultrasound. So what will ultrasound show if there is a bile leak? Do you agree that bilioma hoga, collection hoga, bile ka leakage ka collection? Yeah. What do you do next? So this is what was asked in last AIMS. They just carried on the question from the previous 2020 exam and they asked you in the last exam. So see this, 35 year old female, pain abdomen, following lap coli. Ultrasound shows a collection in right upper quadrant. What is the next step? It's not the same question. This was the last exam question. What do you do next? Do you want to do MRCP? No. So once ultrasound is showing a collection, now you put in a pigtail catheter. You want to drain out the bile. Alright. So remember the next step here is going to be putting in a pigtail. So right now is everybody with me? A patient has this bile leak suspected. Hai. We did an ultrasound collection. Mila, put in a pigtail. Ultrasound guided pigtail catheter. Dalgo. Alright. Right now, we don't know what kind of a leak is there. I just know that there is leak. I don't know which type. Is the cystic duct stump leaking? Is there a major duct leakage? We don't know anything. We'll just put in a pigtail, right? We are all in the same journey. Now, I want to see ki non-invasively, what is the kind of leak? Is there really a leak which is there or is there something else only which is going on? So, investigation of choice, same as biliary obstruction. Again, 
MRCT, right? Because it's going to be non-invasive. Non-invasively, it will tell us what is the kind of leak, what is the site of leak, and what is the Strasbourg type, right? So again, non-invasive, no radiation, no contrast. I like MRCT. Most sensitive though, theoretical question. Highest sensitivity to detect a bile leak. It does not tell me about site. It does not tell me about type. Nothing. It just tells me that it's leak. Ho ra hai. It becomes HEDA. Previous aims ka sawal, right? So this is HEDA. So what will HEDA show us? See this. This is a HEDA scan. It's just like bilirubin. Just as a bilirubin nikalta hai, vese HEDA nikalta hai from the liver. And do you see how it is spread here? There is all of this collection. So I know for sure that leak to hai. But limitation kya hai? Kya leak hai? Which type? Wo sab Right, so this is just most sensitive, not done in practice again. Gold standard kya hai? Something which is always, always done in practice. All right, here it becomes mandatory. In bile leak, this has a very big role to play, which is ERCP, because now I can put in a stent also. It again becomes diagnostic plus therapeutic. It has the highest, highest accuracy to detect this leak, as well as tell us the site, as well as tell us the type as well as offer treatment right so it has all it ticks all the boxes which is again your ERCP can you all again see the endoscope the x-ray in the background now you can argue ki ma'am pichle image mein aapne dikhaya tha white white ab yahan pe black endoscope ho gaya black contrast ho gaya how is this uh, black and white inverting it is very easy we just press one button we can invert the image all right so don't rely too much on black and white of contrast studies right it can be easily inverted okay okay everybody so far are you all with me with bile leak is our journey over for bile leak patient do ERCP and that is it okay right next thing what is this image again uh, previous question potential question very important I tell you this person has diarrhea and uh, now presents with jaundice obstructive jaundice what is the diagnosis this is a beaded appearance. Both MRCP, ERCP tell, showing us intrahepatic, extrahepatic, biliary radical involvement. Plus, there is a beaded appearance, which means that there are multifocal strictures, fit dilatation, fit stricture, fit dilatation. So, what is this? Yes, this is PSC. This is primary sclerosing cholangitis. Okay, is that black tube also ERCP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black tube is the endoscope here, right? So, we have just made the white, the black and black the white okay that is we just inverted the image this primary sclerosing cholangitis 80 percent of the cases are associated with ulcerative colitis all right remember that so you always always have to rule out you see anytime you see primary sclerosing cholangitis first okay so this is what we are seeing beaded appearance please 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 remember this image it can involve intrahepatic as well as extrahepatic radicals treatment what is the treatment of psc treatment of psc is always resection Basically, you need to remove all the radicals and uh, why? what is the main uh, risk here? What is the main um, um, risk? That is why you need to treat it is there is a very high risk of cholangiocarcinoma, right? There's a very, very high risk of cholangiocarcinoma with primary sclerosing cholangitis. Extra hepatic involvement not visualized in this particular case, although you can see that the CBD here is dilated. So there might be some stricture here, but not seen here. Okay, so this is what you need to know as far as PSC is concerned. Next, image. Child with jaundice comes to you with this kind of ultrasound image. Very, very dilated cystic biliary radicals. And what is this here that you are seeing? So why not Caroli? See this image, little soul. What is this? Here you have very, very dilated radicals with a central dot sign. So this is what is Caroli disease, right? So this is the cholidocal cyst, which is the fifth type of cholidocal cyst, wherein you have intrahepatic cystic dilatation of the biliary radicals. They are not narrow. This can't be Caroli's. This is so narrow. This is so beaded. You need dilatation of intrahepatic radicals, and this central dot here represents the portal vein. All right. So remember, Caroli disease treatment. Entire liver is affected liver transplant becomes the treatment of this type of cholidocal cyst. Okay, right. Kasai surgery, again, Prathmesh, don't confuse this and extrahepatic biliary atresia, right? So, Kasai procedure for extrahepatic biliary atresia, Caroli's disease, 
they were transplanted straight away. Okay. Yes. PSC diagnosis can be done on MRCP M. Okay. What is this? Cliche question, but it's It's like pneumoperitoneum of liver, which always, always gets tested. It's a filtering question, which I get. Three questions which will always come. Pneumothorax, pneumoperitoneum, and hydatic cyst. All right. So you need to need to identify each one of these images. So hydatic cyst, most commonly caused by echinococcus granulosus, right? Human beings are dead end host. Remember, they are accidental dead end host. We don't transmit this infection. Liver being the most common organ which is affected. Various stages are seen on Garbi and WHO classification. So you have Garbi and WHO. No need to remember exact stages, but need to know all images. Right, so here you have various daughter cysts, right? So this looks like a honeycomb. Somebody called it honeycomb sign. What happened here? The endocyst, the germinal layer was detached and it appears like a floating membrane. So this is the water lily sign wherein you have the detached endocyst layer. Now the cyst is beginning to degenerate. Again, CT showing us all the daughter cysts. And finally, what is this white on CT? Calcified hydatid. This is the end stage, right? This is inactive hydatid, dead hydatid. No need to treat this particular patient, all right? So this is what you need to know as far as hydatid is concerned. If they ask you investigation of choice, slightly controversial, what will you mark? Ultrasound or CT? If CT is in the option, go for CCT followed by ultrasound. Why? Because hydatid, can it spread outside the liver? Can there be peritoneal hydatidosis? Can there be disseminated hydatidosis? Yes. So that is why to see the entire extent within the peritoneum, complications associated, CCT will always give you a better picture than ultrasound. All right, ultrasound will be able to diagnose hydatid in the liver for sure, but it doesn't give you all the complications. That's why if in the options, go for CCT. Okay. Yeah, why are you saying yes, yes? Okay, anyways, right. What is this? Here we have uh, fever, pain, and uh, jaundice is plus minus. So predominantly fe uh, fever and pain is what the patient is coming to you uh, in the right upper quadrant. What is the diagnosis? It is liver abscess. Very good, all of you. So again, liver abscess, investigation of choice. When I want to see Pus, which is also fluid, yeah. If I want to see fluid, what does our thumb rule say? Pani matlab ultrasound. So again, liver ultras, liver abscess is ultrasound. How will it appear? Will it appear very, very black or will it appear very ecogenic? It won't be pitch black, but it will have some kachra, which is the pus. It will have this debris. It will have this debris, right? So this is how a liver abscess appears on ultrasound. If you do do a CT, what will you see? You'll see this thick double membrane. Do you see under kala kala pus hair? And then this is the inflammatory wall of the abscess, which is very thick double wall that you will see. So this is also an image which is potential uh, to be tested. Okay. Okay, but very, very quick. Um, I don't have hepatoclear union has gone on for 25 minutes. Uh, just tell me uh, diagnosis of liver tumors. Four liver tumors you need to know. Just tell me diagnosis. So, first of all, triple phase CT investigation of choice for all liver SOS, right? We'll do a triple phase arterial venous delayed. Here I have a mask which shows peripheral nodular arterial enhancement. Periphery say as a gola 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 bhadra hai. In the venous phase, it completely fills off. In the exam, they'll give you ki bacho ye arterial hai, ye venous phase hai, isko dekho. So, when it fills up, centripetally filling in this is a hemangioma very very good so this is hemangioma okay people asking amoebic versus pyogenic very very good question amoebic is usually solitary in the right lobe pyogenic usually you will have multifocal abscesses all right so based on the, this image uh, you know uh, you can just say it's solitary more likely to be amoebic but dono same dikhenge dono abscess abscess hi lagenge pyogenic usually because the root is hematogenous there'll be multiple abscesses amoebic abscess one large abscess in the right lobe is how you can distinguish theek hai hydatid ka third image ye ct image ye dekho isme andar andar gole gole daughter cyst hai aise okay uh, going back ha to ye hemangioma hai how does hemangioma centrifugal nahi centripetal Centripetal means it comes in, right? So it starts from the periphery or under. Yeah, you know, centripetal. If 
फ्यूगल इज फ्यूजिटिव दे रन यही ऐसे याद किया था सो दिस इज सेंट्रीपिटल सेंट्री फ्यूगल एनहेंसमेंट कहाँ पड़ा था I remind you, maybe that is what you are confusing. Centrifugal prathmesh was pituitary. अगर कोई पूछे pituitary कैसे enhance करता है, it is centrifugal. Okay? चलो, coming back. <laughs> right? I don't want to get like centripetal, centrifugal definition wrong. Uh, what is this here? This is ecogenic, right? So this is ecogenic lesion. So hemangioma. Um, uh, again, why am I writing hemangioma? Is ecogenic on ultrasound. Okay? what about mri on t2 weighted mri you will find that it's a t2 hyper intense lesion okay so this is called light bulb two things light bulb in the liver t2 hyper intense so one is in the liver hemangioma second is pheochromocytoma dono bahut hi white white hote hain t2 pe isliye unko bol diya you are light bulb okay so this is hemangioma right what about this typical typical image so ट्रिपल फेज सी टी भी कर सकते हैं ट्रिपल फेज एम आर भी कर सकते हैं इधर मैंने क्या दिखाया आपको वट एम आई शोइंग बोन्स हैव बिकम ब्लैक सो नाउ आई एम शोइंग यू ट्रिपल फेज एम आर आई बट कॉन्सेप्ट रिमेन्स सेम कि ये है आर्टीरियल फेज दिल गिव यू कि ये आर्टीरियल है ये वीनस है ये डिलेड है अब आर्टीरियल फेज में लुक एट दिस लीजन वाइट इट इज एनहेंसिंग कम्प्लीटली वट हैपन इन वीनस फेज हैज इट लॉस्ट ऑल ऑफ इट्स कॉन्ट्रास्ट सी दिस कंपेयर इट विथ दिस आर्टीरियल फेज कंपेयर इट विथ लिवर Yes, it has become washed out. So two words you have to memorize today for me if you haven't already: arterial enhancement plus venous washout plus a capsule on delayed. So three things that you want to memorize. All of these are hall marks of HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, and this is what we use for LIRAD score. जैसे बायराज होता है ब्रेस्ट में वैसे लिवर में HCC डिटेक्ट करने के लिए लाइराज होता है. लाइराज कौन सी मोडालिटी से करते हैं टीपीसीटी टीपीएमआर और कॉन्ट्रास्ट एनहेंस्ड अल्ट्रासाउंड और ऑल ऑफ दी अबव और नन ऑफ दी अबव और आई विल स्किप दिस क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज योर आंसर लाइराज किसके लिए अप्लाई होता है ऑल ऑफ दी अबव ओके सो ऑल ऑफ दीज थ्री मोडालिटीज वी कैन डू अर ट्रिपल फेस स्कैनिंग एंड वी कैन सी दीज फीचर्स एंड वी कैन मेक अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ एच सी ओके राइट थर्ड मास a mass with a central stellate scar tan colored mass on gross image t2 hyper intense scar dekhna hai non calcified scar two features central stellate scar it becomes focal nodular hyperplasia oncocytoma bindu good that it has a central stellate scar but wrong organ liver mein nahi kidney mein right so kidney mein central stellate scar oncocytoma okay When you do a Doppler scar, में मिलेगा आपको spoke wheel pattern vascularity. All right, so this is the FNH. On the other hand, अगर तो scar वाला lesion मिला again in liver and it has calcification, what is your diagnosis gonna be? It is gonna be the variant of HCC fibrolamellar HCC. If it is T2 hyper intense, non calcified FNH. If it is in the kidney, it becomes On cytoma. If there is a central stellate scar in the pancreatic head in a grandmother ka age ka female, what is your diagnosis going to be? It is going to be serous cyst adenoma. So are these four diagnoses clear in all of your minds? Organ and central stellate scar buzzword. Okay. So this was our first topic in thirty minutes time. Now going on for next agenda is. Five seven minutes for Doppler. Okay, five minutes. I'll finish Doppler. Just the basic basic stuff that you need to know. Doppler is a modification of which investigation? सबसे पहले यही बता दो. Ultrasound, right? So remember, Doppler shift again has no radiation. Please don't say Doppler has radiation. Just a modification of ultrasound. Do you remember Doppler shift? हम पढ़ते थे if an ambulance is coming making noise towards you it appears louder and when it goes away it appears softer right so that is doppler shift that that same principle we are using what is this application do you have rbcs which are coming towards you so let's just say my probe is here okay rbcs are coming towards me do you agree that their velocity can be calculated if i know the frequency shift that these are flowing so that is how i study the vessels based on this doppler shift effect ki agar mujhe inka frequency shift pata chal gaya 
then I can calculate the potential velocity because this frequency shift is directly proportional to the velocity of blood vessels. Okay, so this is what we use. So if I go into concepts, I'll never complete, but I hope this is uh, uh, making sense to you. Let's look at a repeat question. 35 year old smoker male with painful ulcer, tip of great toe, black discoloration. Best initial investigation. What is the diagnosis? Doppler. We are studying Doppler. Answer is Doppler, right? So whenever we talk about PAD, which is nothing but peripheral arterial disease, again, thumb rules, guys. Never ever forget our thumb rules. Always any vascular pathology, start off with a Doppler ultrasound, okay? If they ask you best investigation, investigation of choice to see vascular narrowing, peripheral arterial disease, to see atherosclerosis, calcific plaques, calcium, what does my thumb rule say? CT. I want to see vessels. So do you agree I have to do CT and geography? Very good all of you. CT and geography becomes investigation of choice. Gold standard. Something which has diagnostic plus therapeutic potential. Balloon dal ke angioplasty kar do, stent kar do. It becomes DSA, digital subtraction and geography. Yeah. Duplex ultrasound is the same as Doppler ultrasound, right? So I'll show you the images. Wait, where do I show you the images? I will, yeah, look at this image, right? So here, can you see the background may be mode image hai? There is a B mode image in the background and on that I have put in this box. When I put a box here, no, no, Shatakshi, most initial D-dimer is pulmonary embolism. <laughs> Read the question, no? Like you have to see question. Most initial will be different for every uh, diagnosis, right? So again, don't be confused. I know you are in panic mode, all of you guys. But again, in exam, see, uh, when you have too much information in your brain, you know what happens? Your brain kind of gives up when you give it information in the last minute. So right now in the final few days, it's very, very important that you only do things that you have read before. All right, so that at least you can rule out in the exam. Don't fill your brain with all kinds of information in the last minute keep a calm mind and then study all right and don't make silly mistakes fine okay coming back so here in the background you have b mode and then you have a color box that you have put which is showing color okay so can i say ki background mein b mode bhi hai and then there is color doppler so two modes hua to humne isko naam de diya duplex okay how are the colors if this is the transducer, if it's flowing towards the transducer, usually artery, it is red. If it is away from the transducer, it is blue. Okay, so this is called duplex. Now, I have duplex ke saath mein aisa wave forms bhi aapko. I give you such wave forms. Do you agree that it becomes three things? B mode plus color plus spectral. This is called spectral Doppler. Because it is spectrum, mil raha hai, right? So this is also called as triplex Doppler. Okay, so ye naam hai but ultimately remains Doppler. Okay, right. So now let's go into the waveforms. So is mein kitni bar direction ho raha hai across the baseline. This is the peak wave. So this is how a normal extremity artery will appear. Still discussing peripheral arterial disease. This is the main systolic upstroke. Jabhi bhi systole mein bhoat blood aega, it will go up like this. Then in the diastole, it reverses. But the arteries are very elastic, right? So it will give one final push to pump the blood into the vessels. So that is this third peak. So that is why a normal extremity arteries show a triphasic waveform. Understood? Systole, diastole, diastole. Okay, so this is triphasic normally with atherosclerosis. With peripheral arterial disease, what will happen? Do you understand that the final push de raha tha na, bichara, wo nahi So it becomes what? Systolic upstroke, diastolic reversal only. So it becomes biphasic. So biphasic is an early diseased artery, right? So this is early diseased artery. Ab, too much calcification, right? It is only able to just pump blood in one direction. No systole, no diastole. It doesn't have that elasticity only. But wo blood dairy like a pipe. So that becomes a monophasic waveform, right? So this is definitely a diseased extremity vessel. And ye dekho, is there any flow? Nahin, artery hi nahin bacha. No tube only to pump out blood. Completely blocked. Plaque hai jo pura obstruct kar gaya. So this is absent flow, complete obstructed 
vessel so is this clear to you how doppler is going to help us yeah in studying peripheral arterial disease initially it will tell us ki bhai aapka disease early hai late hai to see the extent ki bhai kaisa vessel involvement hai we will do ct angiography okay wait for vein abhi artery pe focus karo don't jump just listen to what i am saying and understand is artery clear peripheral arterial disease clear to everybody theek hai ab jata hai again just one thing you need to know resistive index so this up stroke that was there the highest velocity is called the peak systolic velocity okay so this is peak systolic velocity in the diastolic phase this particular velocity here is called the end diastolic velocity okay so when i take a ratio like this psv minus edv upon psv that is r i no need to remember this full form but why is it important because based on this i get two kinds of arteries i get low resistant arteries which is having blood which is flowing with a low resistance easily ja raha hai and high af high resistance vessels okay so do you recognize this ye kaisa wave form banayenge bachcho abhi abhi padha what is this do you agree ki ye triphasic hai extremity vessels ka hai so this is a triphasic wave form so triphasic velocity high resistant arteries right so this will be seen in sa not very very important life changing arteries nahi hai ye extremity arteries face ko dene wali external carotid फास्टिंग मिजेंट्रिक आर्टरी तो इनमें अपने को हाई रेजिस्टेंस फ्लो चलेगा इतना ज्यादा जरूरत नहीं है आई कैन कट ऑफ द ब्लड सप्लाई बट वेस्ट जिनको हमेशा लाइफ चेंजिंग ऑर्गन आई नीड ब्लड ऑल द टाइम आई कॉन्ट हैव इट गेटिंग रिवर्स इन डायस्टल आई नीड फॉरवर्ड फ्लो ऑल द टाइम डू यू अग्री कि ये बाई फेजिक फ्लो मुझे हमेशा चाहिए लो रेजिस्टेंस वेव फॉर्म का आई ऑलवेज नीड फॉरवर्ड फ्लो आई कैन हैव नो रिवर्सल हियर येस सो दिस are your important vessels brain ko can we have reversal no hepatic renal testicular ye sare organs ko we need waveform which is continuous so inko bolte hain low resistant arteries all right so just very logical exam mein puchenge which of these are low resistance except so just use your logic ki kon hai life changing organs jinko hamesha blood chahiye they are low resistance okay now coming to the question which they love 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 to ask All of these are signs of normal vein on ultrasound, except अब जाते हैं vein पे. So vein, will it have a black anechoic lumen? काला काला lumen होगा vein का. हाँ, it has blood no, which is flowing and blood is anechoic. Correct. Low resistance, biphasic or monophasic? So it depends. Or right, actually so depend on basically when call them monophasic also. Basically here the term uh, phasicity is not very important. It's this forward flow of diastole which is very very important. All right, so you can say monophasic yes because it's not changing its direction across the baseline. But um, yeah, I mean it's not very very important to call it anything based on the phasicity here. Fine. So anechoic lumen is a normal vein compressible? Yes. Is it showing monophasic flow on Doppler? Yes. Decreased flow on augmentation? No. When there is decreased flow on augmentation, means that there is a DVT. So let's talk about this. All right. So लिखा हुआ blurred दिख रहा है नहीं प्रेम इसको resolution को change करो अपना you will see. Okay. Right. So what is this called? ये sign भी पूछा हुआ है neat में very very uh, easy. So this is like a Mickey Mouse. Right. So इसको बोला किसी ने Mickey Mouse. sign right so this is the mickey mouse sign which is seen at the saphenous femoral junction so this is the common femoral vein just pe saphenous great saphenous vein aa raha hai so this is the mickey mouse sign so when i compress guys when i do a b mode ultrasound and i compress in teeno mein se kya cheez hai compress hona chahiye do you agree both of these normal veins should get compressed yeah so let's see this so this is how a normal b mode ultrasound will appear on a video loop see this यहाँ पे ये दोनों जो को देखो वेन आई एम कंप्रेसिंग डू यू सी हाउ इट गेट्स कंप्रेस्ड सो दिस इज योर कंप्रेसिबल वेन ऑन दी अदर हैंड नाउ लुक एट दिस मिकी माउस हियर कंप्रेस कर रही हूँ क्या कुछ भी कंप्रेस हो रहा है हियर इज द आर्ट्री दिस इज द वेन एंड दिस इज द ग्रेट सेफिनस वेन लुक एट देम आर दे गेटिंग कंप्रेस्ड नो दे आर नॉट गेटिंग कंप्रेस्ड मीन्स यहाँ पे कुछ ना कुछ गड़बड़ है नॉन कंप्रेसिबल वेन्स प्लस आर दे ब्लैक इन दोनों को देखो और उससे कंपेयर करो क्या ये एनिकोइक है या कुछ कुछ कचरा दिख रहा है सबको 
मुझे तो दिख रहा है थ्रोम्बस हाँ आपको भी दिख रहा है इज देर एन इकोजेनिक थ्रोम्बस दैट यू कैन सी हियर या सो दे आर सो डीवीटी वेन कैसी होगी दे विल हैव इकोजेनिक थ्रोम्बस विद इन दे विल बी नॉन कंप्रेसिबल सो टू डिफरेंस इज डन फॉर अस बिटवीन डीवीटी एंड नॉर्मल वेन एवरीबडी गुड नाउ गोइंग ऑन टू स्पेक्ट्रल ट्रेसिंग क्या मिलेगा इन अ नॉर्मल वेन वॉट विल यू सी यू विल सी मोनोफेजिक फ्लो विच इज पल्सटाइल कैन यू सी दिस कि मोनोफेजिक फ्लो है बट साथ में क्या है आर आर दीज अंडुलेशन सीन ये अंडुलेशन किसके वजह से है इज द एंटायर वीनस सिस्टम कम्युनिकेटिंग विद द लंग्स एंड द हार्ट विल देर बी रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी दैट यू विल सी या सो दिस इज हाउ अ नॉर्मल वेन अपियर्स विच इज मोनोफेजिक विथ रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी ये देख रहे हो इसको उल्टा कर सकते हैं Just like black and white, तो ये इस पे डिरेक्शन पे मत जाना बट मोनोफेजिक फ्लो विथ रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी इज अ नॉर्मल वेन अगर डी वी टी है वॉट विल यू सी यू विल सी रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी इज लॉस्ट एंड यू विल सी दैट देर इज एबसेंट फ्लो राइट देर इज नो फ्लो नॉट मोनोफेजिक फ्लो एबसेंट फ्लो इन दैट पर्टिक्युलर वेन विच इज थ्रॉम्बोस्ट okay so this is what we are seeing that there will be this undulation which is respiratory phasicity and one direction through the baseline monophasic flow right so this is the feature of normal vein augmentation karke kuch tha option mein what is augmentation let's just say that this is the leg that i have drawn very well in the first attempt i am evaluating the common femoral vein of the patient koi aake calf daba deta hai काफ दबाएगा तो डू यू अग्री कि अगर नॉर्मल वेन है तो सडनली इधर ज्यादा सडनली इधर ज्यादा ब्लड आएगा यू विल सी दैट अचानक से ऐसा पीक आएगा राइट सो दैट इज व्हाट इज कॉल्ड ऑगमेंटेशन और राइट सो ऑगमेंटेशन पे अगर इंक्रीज फ्लो है दैट इज नॉर्मल बट अगर नो इंक्रीज फ्लो मीन्स कि कुछ ना कुछ तो ब्लॉक है राइट दैट वेन इज नॉट इन कम्युनिकेशन विद डिस्टल वेन सो दैट इज वाई डिक्रीज फ्लो ओके रेखा रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी मीन्स सी All of these veins are in communication with the heart. Do you agree? कोई वॉल्व नहीं है बीच में आई बी सी से लेके कॉमन फीमोरल वेन एंड योर फीमोरल वेन आर ऑल इन कम्युनिकेशन सो डू यू अग्री जो भी हमारा हार्ट का पल्सेशन है लंग्स का फेजिसिटी है उसे कुछ ना कुछ ऊपर नीचे जाएगा वेन का फ्लो सो दैट इज रेस्पिरेटरी फेजिसिटी अंडरस्टूड ओके सो दिस इज वॉट वॉज अबाउट डॉपलर ऑफ पेरीफेरल आर्टीरियल डिजीज डी वी टी कलर डिरेक्शन हो गया नाउ टेल मी वॉट इज दिस what is this structure that i am showing you on the doppler image here i have the liver and then one tubular structure showing up take this is portal vein why is this important what is the color implication here what does red tell me if here is my probe that is where i am seeing it from what does red tell me that it is coming towards the probe is that important what if it shows me blue color what if it shows me blue color what does that tell me does that tell me there is hepatofugal it is going away from the liver yeah hepatofugal flow ka matlab kya hai guys yes so when it changes the direction very nice it means that there is portal hypertension so remember doppler is the investigation of choice for portal hypertension and the earliest finding i will see is reversal of flow hepatofugal flow is the earliest sign of portal hypertension okay will you remember this fine <laughs> what about this when i see this sign what does that tell you ki blue blue bhi hai red red bhi hai towards bhi aa raha hai away bhi ja raha hai means that there is a closed network jisme blood gol gol ghoom raha hai what is this gola jisme blood gol gol ghoom raha hai it is aneurysm right so this is how an aneurysm will appear this is called yin and yang sign very good this is called yin and yang sign like a chinese philosophy good and bad go together aneurysm so that is why kabhi bhi aneurysm mein bhi pucha initial investigation you will always mark doppler so any vessel they ask always mark doppler god aaj to ekdam detailed class chal raha hai um and when i skip this we are going to go straight to head trauma also today only i have kept and i have made such an extensive presentation on head trauma for some reason 
that it was a 70 slide ka MCQ uh, PPT. Anyways, so let's do fast five MCQs very quickly and then we'll try and do um, PET scan and PNS anatomy at least uh, tomorrow. Okay, so um, let's do fast five MCQs very, very quickly. Hopefully that will be faster. What is the investigation of choice for localization of PTH adenoma? Abhi abhi last exam ka sawal. Repeat question of AIMS. Localization, remember? Sesta may be alright. So, Sesta may be nuclear medicine scan is the best for locating parathyroid adenoma. Alright, any kind of special CT that is coming up in a very big way for PTH adenoma, which is exam mein agar aaya, again you will give me treat. What is that? That is 4D CT. So, remember 4D CT is used for PTH adenoma. Alright, so you must have to remember this four dimensional CT. Fourth dimension is time. Okay. So, we just arterial venous aise karke dekhte hain. That is why um, fancy name of 4 DCT. Okay? Chalo, ye batao. Easy question tha badai. 25 year old female having HIV was prescribed ergotamine for migraine. Acute migratory pain ho gaya with non-palpable dorsalis pedis. What is the likely cause? So, ye kya hai? This is, this is CT angio, MR angio. Both of them will look the same. This is likely to be MR angio. And what you are seeing here is, in niche ke vessels bilaterally dekhi nahi rahe, right? Beyond the popliteal, they are both narrowed, suggesting vasospasm. So, vasospasm is the side effect of ergotamine, hence the diagnosis being ergotism. It can't be atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis, one, 25 year old female. Second, it won't be bilaterally symmetrical to such extent. Third, you will have proximal narrowing first and then you will have distal narrowing, okay? So, for three reasons, it can't be atherosclerosis. It is definitely not a neural cause. Identify the modality shown here. So, if you guys are my students and you get such questions wrong in AIMS, when AIMS will give you such questions, then I will not be happy, okay? Because we have learned this so many times, bone is white, bone is white, it is CT, right? So, you are not getting confused with dye study. You are not getting confused with contrast study just because it's a contrast enhanced CT. A dye study is something like ERCP. ERCP padaj, anywhere where we see X-ray in the background and then you have contrast which is injected. Such studies are called contrast studies. Such studies are called fluoroscopic studies, right? So, this is what is dye study. This is a CT. Presence of contrast in the CT doesn't make it dye study, okay? So, don't confuse in the exams. And geography, again, digital subtraction and geography, background will be subtracted. If background is not subtracted and you're seeing the vessels with contrast, it becomes normal and geography, right? Understood, Anubhav? X-ray is X-ray, standard, chest X-ray, abdomen X-ray, any X-ray, okay? Is this clear? Everybody, please don't get this wrong. CT. Next question. Kal pada tha. 30 year old male presents to trauma center after road traffic accident. He is unable to speak in complete sentences. On auscultation, resonant note is seen on the right side. Means pneumothorax. Straight away my diagnosis is very clear. What is the appropriate management? Patient is unable to speak. Patient is in distress. This becomes tension pneumothorax. Black, black, unadulterated, no bronchovascular markings, visceral pleural line, definitely tension pneumothorax. Do needle thoracostomy with a large bone needle. Size, who will tell me size recommended by ATLS of this needle? And you don't stop. So, first of all, adult me kaha dalenge, fifth intercostal space, and then you put an ICD, right? So, that is what is the management. Good. It is a 14 gauge needle, right? That we use. Very good, guys. So, ye hai needle thoracostomy followed by ICD. Next, again, question which is must. What did I tell you ki hamesha yaega? 35 year old male, severe pain abdomen since 2 hours. History of peptic ulcer disease. Hint. Chest x ray is shown. What is the next step? Oath, everybody, something you are never missing on a chest x-ray PA view. Sabse pehle hum yaan dekhenge, air under diaphragm. When you see this, on the right side, not on the left side, kyunki left mein to fundus gas ka bhi air aata hai. So, always on right side, air under diaphragm, it is pneumoperitoneum, perforation peritonitis. Next step, IV fluids denge, always. IV fluids option mein kabhi mana nahi karna, kyunki hamesha de do. Resuscitate, hamesha. 
अल्ट्रासाउंड करना है नहीं माई डायग्नोसिस इज मेड परफोरेशन है अल्ट्रासाउंड में नॉट शो मी एयर एयर इज एनी मी ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड एक्सप्लोर करना है येस प्लीज पेप्टिकल्स और लाइकली गैस्ट्रिक परफोरेशन सी सी टी करना है इफ आई हैड डायग्नोस्टिक डिलेमा कुड आई हैव डन अ सी टी येस डू आई हैव अ डायग्नोस्टिक डिलेमा नो सो नो पॉइंट ऑफ वेस्टिंग टाइम डूइंग अ सी टी राइट इफ दे डू आस्क यू हाउ विल यू कन्फर्म योर डायग्नोसिस की पक्का बताओ भाई कि परफोरेशन है या नहीं then you say की कर लो सी टी बट इट्स योर वेस्ट यू आर वेस्टिंग योर टाइम ओके बट राइट नाउ वेन देर इज नो डायग्नोस्टिक डिलेमा स्टिक विथ वन एंड थ्री राइट इज दिस क्लियर मेकिंग सेंस एवरीबडी हाउ योर आंसर चेंजेस विथ समथिंग विथ वन वर्ड वॉट अज सी बैग इज ऑलवेज यूज एम एनी टाइम आई सी डी इज पुट और राइट सो आई सी डी इज पुट विथ वॉटर सील ऑलवेज ओके बट हियर डू यू वॉन्ट टू पुट आई सी डी और फर्स्ट यू वॉन्ट टू पुट नीडल यू फर्स्ट वॉन्ट टू पुट नीडल इफ दिस पेशेंट वॉज स्टेबल देन योर आंसर वुड हैव बीन डी ठीक है ओके डन सो दिस इज वॉट वी हैड टू आउट ऑफ फोर टू डे इज द लीस्ट प्रोडक्टिव बट वी डिड वेरी वेरी बिग टॉपिक्स लाइक वी डिड डू वन टॉपिक वी डिड लाइक so many topics isn't it so i hope you guys also relate to that and uh, tomorrow last day i will try and jam pack as much as possible ha huh? if patient is stable then cct can be done ha huh, himanshu but this is not that trauma wala question right you are again i think thinking of trauma fast wala approach here if your diagnosis is clear that there is perforation your ct is usually not indicated right peptic ulcer hai stomach perforation hai no point of doing ct if you already know what is the cause and the site of perforation theek hai ha last teen din mein kya pade last teen din mein ha pns to main dala bhi nahi aaj कल करेंगे पी एन एस लास्ट थ्री डेज में यू हैव टू लुक एट माइक्रोबायोलॉजी इमेजेस लिख लिख लो जो जो बोल रही हूँ माइक्रोबायो इमेजेस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बायो केमिस्ट्री साइकल्स इन बॉन एर ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज्म फॉरेंसिक मेडिसिन एवरीथिंग इफ यू हैव डन इट फ्रॉम वन रिसोर्स इफ यू हैव कंसाइज नोट्स आई हैड डन इट फ्रॉम डॉक्टर सुमित सेट्स बुक तो प्यारी सी छोटी सी बुक थी आई रेड इट कम्प्लीटली इन द लास्ट थ्री डेज कर सकते हो ऐसा कुछ है तो कर लो फॉरेंसिक वेरी हाईली ऑप्स गाइनी previous year questions psm all previous year questions so ops gyni psm are game changers for inict pyqs need to be on point okay apart from that jo kal epidemio ka class liya biostats ka class liya you have to have to see and revise the formula and everything about biostats because that is sure shot two three questions which come okay aur likh rahe ho to main bolu <laughs> apart from that anatomy just um, see images if you have handy if you like anatomy fir karo if it depresses you chhod do shraddha pe okay just see branches of vessels and just see nerve supply brachial plexus some important things anatomy rapid revision uh, class which i had taken just see that embryology derivatives just see that one class of anatomy rapid revision which we had done okay apart from that should i continue uh, apart from that you have to see all btrs all right you have to see all btrs that we have done uh, uh, abhi midnight express dekhne ka time nahi hai so see all the btrs which are all your high yield uh, last minute points okay iske alawa what else will you uh, read in the last two days on that biochem micro pharma of course how can we forget pharma pharma aapko hamesha hamesha revise karna hai if you done first aid फर्स्ट एड के डब्बे डब्बे देख जाओ अदरवाइज वेर एवर यू हैव फार्मा कंसाइज यू हैव टू सी ऑल क्लासिफिकेशन एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स ड्रग का मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऐसे करके फटाफट फटाफट पढ़ो कि हर ड्रग का इतनी चीजें इज इन योर माइंड ओके बस बाकी डोंट स्ट्रेस टू मच अबाउट मेडिसिन सर्जरी एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इफ यू स्टार्ट रीडिंग दैट बाकी सब छोड़ दो फिर ठीक है सो इट इज नॉट नीडेड यूल गेट कंसेप्चुअल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस ठीक है तो इतना कर लो ये हो जाए फिर बताना ओके आफ्टर दिस देन आई विल टेल यू व्हाट टू डू नेक्स्ट इफ यू स्टिल हैव टाइम देन यू सी छोटा सब्जेक्ट सो राइट यू सी इन ईएनटी एन ऑर्थो एनेस्थीरिया ऑफथेल के वेरी हाई इल्ड रैपिड रिविजन जो विच आई हैव टेकन और सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट्स वट यू हैव जस्ट सी दैट ओके फाइन सो डू दिस मच एंड दिस शुड टेक केयर ऑफ एन फॉर यू इफ यू कैन डू दिस वेल एंड होपफुली यू विल गेट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस थिंग ओनली ओके फाइन सिस्टोग्राम वर्सिस सिस्टोग्राफी सेम थिंग हाँ सी टी सिस्टोग्राफी है तो सी टी के बेसिस पे अगर खाली सिस्टोग्राफी है तो एक्स कॉन्ट्रास्ट स्टडी ठीक है बाकी सेम थिंग ओके और रेड गैस थैंक यू सो मच कल मिलेंगे फोर ओ क्लॉक उससे पहले आज मिलेंगे ये अगेन वन मोर थिंग डरमा इमेजेस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट है ना तो आज सारी डरमा इमेजेस फटाफट फटाफट आई विल ट्राई एंड रिवाइज फॉर यू 
सो सी यू ऑल एट नाइन ओ क्लॉक ऑन एप और फिर कल चार बजे ओके एंड देन कल रात को नौ बजे वन शॉट पंद्रह मिनट का क्विज यू गिव एंड बी हैप्पी कि ठीक है मुझे रेडियो के क्वेश्चन तो आ जाएंगे सारे ओके और रेट गाइज सो बाई एंड हैव अ गुड डे प्रोडक्टिव डे कीप स्टडिंग एंड या